Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City. This is the NYSC studio for the QBs, our new home on the East Coast. This is a super pop. It's our point of presence. It's an access point. It's our super node, our community in New York. Going back 15 years during the big data days. Now we have a presence in New York. We're going to continue to accelerate that full time at the 2025. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Dave Vellante drives down from Boston. We'll be seeing a lot more content out of here. We've got Andrew from AWS here, senior industry specialist, media entertainment, games and sports. Works with the NHL, who we just did an interview with around their awesome innovation with video in the cloud. Andrew, thanks for coming on theCUBE. This is our East Coast studio, what do you think? Uh, great, it's great. Not too no, shabby, no, no. better than our Palo Alto <laughs> one with uh, in the middle of Palo Alto with some TVs. This is oh, like it's a good, good scenery here, I, I love it. I was telling the NHL, it's like every day is like the playoffs here, something going on, a lot of action here, a lot to talk about. Uh, obviously media entertainment in New York's big. NHL really hits a home run here, you know, mixed metaphor, hits a, scores a goal, I should say. <laughs> it's a better, better example because they're talking about infrastructure, trucks running, limited capacity. They move to the cloud, they get massive advantage. Um, major change for them, and, and you guys are enabling that. Makes a lot of sense, obviously we've been covering Amazon for over a dec decade and a half. This is a transformation for them. Take us through the Amazon piece of this. What did they do? He was totally stoked about like the idea of having more camera angles, 8Ks coming around the corner, the ability to push one button, eliminate some steps, experiment, not be constrained. But how did they pull it off? Take us through the, the, the partnership. So yeah, the NHL has really leaned in to all the technology, leaning into AWS, and I think it's really enabling them to produce and create more content for the fans and grow the game of hockey. When we think back to 2021, when the um, AWS and NHL partnership kicked off, really the two big work streams that workflows that they leaned into were um, NHL Edge IQ, so the analytics, and then an encoding and scheduling platform. What that did was it took all six, six video angles from every arena, brought that video up to AWS, relying heavily on um, Elemental Media Connect, and out for distribution to pers team personnel, league personnel, officials, um, partners of the league, broadcasters. So taking these video angles, running them up through AWS and out for, for distribution. And it was an automated system. So before every game, you know, these camera, these video signals in the cloud would turn on, after the game they would turn off. And really what that did, for, from my perspective, was it really allowed them to learn the ingest and the distribution pipeline of running video workflows in the cloud. And that really laid the groundwork for them to now take advantage of different types of production work workflows. Um, and then on the other side, a lot with NHL Edge IQ, so developing um, new analytics with AWS to bring more insights uh, to fans about the game of hockey. Live cloud production. I mean, just that kind of the phrase kind of is a mind blowing. Cloud production, video cloud production, I can buy that now editing, whatnot. How about live production? You guys did, you're doing live broadcasts. Take us through what the live piece, because that that's like, this is a, literally a game changer for video producers because all that workflow that was manual goes into the cloud. What does that mean, live cloud production? So really, streaming games. Is, um, so it's so really in for the end user, live cloud production. If if I'm a fan watching at home, I shouldn't really know what live cloud production <laughs> is. I should be able to watch a game the yeah. same way that I would watch a game if it was produced terrestrially. Yeah. So. Um, Really what live cloud production is, is it's bringing all the video signals up through the cloud um, and all of the operations of a broadcast or production, all those operations now, you can operate and produce using cloud technologies. And really from the AWS perspective, we're the infrastructure. So we're allowing you know, a switcher or replay or graphics all of those softwares are the same, they're just running on AWS infrastructure. So if I'm a graphics operator, 
I could operate graphics really from wherever because there's not it's not tied to a physical server. Yeah. Um, so I think really what AWS so is op doing, the operator roles don't change. No, just the the mechanism does. Correct. The the infrastructure it's no, it's no longer on a physical server. It's not bound to a physical control room or a production truck. The server itself is running um, mainly on on AWS EC2 instances. Um, so the so are they streaming live games now in the cloud, or did they just was that the one use case with the Capitals and the Carolina Hurricanes? So on yeah, so on March 22nd, uh, Carolina Hurricanes played the Washington Capitals. We ran 12 uh, video signals up through AWS. Um, we were able to create a control room in under three weeks um, in Secaucus, New Jersey, at the NHL Network, and. All the all the workstations were all powered by AWS. They were the same, you know. The the technical director had their switcher. The replay operators had their same, um, you know, replay um, operation stations. Same with graphics. Um, but that game was really groundbreaking, I think, because it showed that again, to be able to create a control room in under three weeks, and all the operators have the same working experience that they usually have, um, was really was really special, I think, and really game changing for the industry. Well, that's show. real CapEx. Yeah, well, it's, it's I mean, all. And that's real cost to deploy servers, get all the systems in place. You now replace that with cloud agility. Right, because, you know, when we were testing, we would turn, we would turn the, the servers on, and then when we were done, we would serve them off. We would turn them off. So during okay. the, the okay. If, if we did a rehearsal, a game, you know, the, the previous game, the game in between, no cost was being incurred because all those servers were turned off. And then, you know, the morning of the Capital Hurricanes game, yeah. we just turned it back on. So it, moving to that OpX model really saves, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of money. And also from a, from a sustainability standpoint, because now, yeah. you know, you have 20 people that, Normally, could travel or be on site for a game. Now they're they they don't have to travel. They can stay What's where the they backhaul are. from the stadium of the arena to the cloud? Is it satellite or internet? So we so like both or so we ran. Um, we used, we had a direct connect to run the the video internet. signals over the internet. So so yeah. So it's using um, a, a direct connect. We had a direct connect signal. Um, so that brought the video signals up through AWS. Into, into Media Connect, and then ultimately um, in Secaucus, all of that video, you know, yeah. normally like you would, you could access, you could That's run replays, graphics. I know that, they get a lot of uh, data centers there. <laughs> 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 and it's probably where you did it. All right, now, this, one of the things they didn't talk about, I want, that's why I wanted to wait for you to come into the queue, because the AI piece is big. I know Mr. Matt Garman recently, he said, you know, AI is the centerpiece of all their strategies. Um, AI is going to be a good opportunity for them with data, they have a lot of data. Um, so how are they using those analytics? What's the role of data? I didn't bring up the whole IOT thing because I know what you guys are doing with the NFL. Um, like we interviewed them in the past and we know there's a lot of instrumentation going on with the players too. Um, I didn't have time to get into it with them, but again, there's a lot of data coming in and he was talking about AK coming soon. So like, I mean, it's this is going to be a fun time if you're a techie. If you're a cloud provider, you got to, it's going to make you guys work harder, obviously, because it's where the customer's going. Well, and it's what's 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 really unique. What they're doing too is they're they're approaching their data strategy in a couple different ways. So when we think about the analytics, the creation of the analytics that we've um, we've worked on with them. It's all different types of analytics. So you have shot and save analytics, which are you know really is just you know, pulling historical data and providing fans with, with a, you know, a different view of the different strengths and weaknesses of players and where they're shooting from or goalies, you know, what are their tendencies? Um, and then when you look at something like face-off probability where you're using um, SageMaker and, and machine learning and more of, a, of an AI ML model to generate probabilities yeah. before a face-off takes place. And what I love about that one too is, you can see in real time using the puck and player tracking data. If if two players are skating around around the circle, you see probabilities for them. And then you know two other yeah. players come in, and you see real time how quick 
those yeah. probabilities are adjusting based on the location of the players. Um, and then we've you know worked on projected goal rates with them yeah. and now ice tilt, which is looking at the momentum of the game yeah. and, and looking in from that perspective. So really yeah. there's so much right now that we, we're doing. We with did them. get into the betting side of it, micro betting, which is I'm like, they were they weren't really upset because they have betting partners. <laughs> and so data will be coming and so latency now becomes a thing. And you know, they they want to go zero latency. So well, it's really and, low. And, that, and that's where you know, the like, face off probability at the, the stadium series um, last year at MetLife Stadium when there would be a break in action and then, you know, two players would be ready to, to take a face off and then they'd be, you know, sk different players would be skating around. You could see in real time on the yeah. scoreboard, the players and their probabilities adjusting and, and as close to real time as you could get. <laughs> it was so cool to see that, uh, you know, just to, 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 to see I think it's going to be a fan explosion. I did a, a live interview yesterday um, when the WNBA was here talking about the role of AI and technology in sports. I mentioned the NHL actually, uh, along with the NFL. I mean, AI changes the game in real time. You know, halftime adjustments is not a locker room thing anymore. It's real time now. Also betting, okay, fan experience, camera angles are getting better. Now you guys can take every camera angle into the cloud as one console, mix and match in real time. They were explaining how they could just take social media feeds, all doing that bespoke jobs and just getting them all done with AI, right? So you start to see the merchandising of content, like not merchandising like the shirts, <laughs> like merch, <laughs> like, like the clips. Ab absolutely. I, I mean, that's we're in the merch business of video. I guess we are too. And, and I think what the NHL has been doing a lot of where I think kind of the the roads are converging is this, this notion of alternate broadcasts. And that was another cool component of March 22nd was not only did we have a main feed of the broadcast yeah. of the, the Hurricanes Capitals game, yeah. but we also had a, a version NHL Edge Unlocked where that was a broadcast entirely focused on analytics. Yeah. And and what that did was it, it allowed the NHL to experiment with let's let's do let's do just an analytics driven using our puck and player tracking data NHL Edge IQ analytics. You're right, digital let's twin. bring all this. Let's bring all this together and let's just do a version of a broadcast just focused on the analytics, and that's catering to a different fan. Yeah. And and I think it's it's allowing fans who are inter so interested in the numbers to watch the game from that perspective. You guys could literally create a digital twin of a hockey game <laughs> and simulate based upon stats and with AI, make it look real. Imagine having different players, an all-star game that never happened, happen. Well, they're doing, I mean, I mean they're doing know, other. I mean, that would be very cool. Well, with their broadcasts, uh, uh, you know, they've done with big yeah. city greens and multiverses where they turn their players into, yeah. you know, characters from, from TV shows. Again, that's growing the game and it's bringing in more fans for them. And I think all of this technology yeah. is is enabling that and it's ultimately leading back to the end consumer. All right, let's get into the Amazon value proposition. I want to get the, the how, how, how costly is this? Compare the scope of cost versus say their their old approach. Cause you know, they were outlining the, the old trucks, HD error, all this was old HD cable, now cloud. Um, you guys, Amazon has experience across many sports. Um, We've covered those stories, but what's the price? I mean, if I want to run my video, live video production in the cloud, how does it work? How do I get started? Just hit the console and just go spin up some uh, uh, live media, media encoders? What, how does it work? So what's I the think, experience with the operator developer? So I think, you know, there are, there are many different what's, approaches yeah. that we're taking with. I can't just put my credit card down. Yeah. Or I technically <laughs> could. <laughs> well, I, I think yeah. it's, there are different approaches to, you know, getting to a, a full live cloud production. I think when you look at what the NHL did, they started by, you know, focusing on the ingest and distribution. And, and even though, you know, while they did the March 22nd game, you would ask, what else are they doing with the cloud? You know, one really cool story is in the Stanley Cup finals, they had an American Sign Language alternate broadcast. And while that wasn't produced in the cloud, the video signals that were being, were being used to produce that were running through Media Connect. So yeah. they're taking bits and pieces of it to say, how can this benefit us now? Even if we're not going to do a full production in the cloud tomorrow, how can we use the AWS technologies to create more content? And your, your question about costs, I think the, the biggest thing for me is moving to an OpEx model. So what we touched on before where yeah. 
you don't have to purchase a, a, a giant server for a, a switcher. You can pay as you go. It's a pay as you go model. So when you're, you know, if you only do three games, you're really only paying for three games. Yeah. You're not. You know, so the fact that it's an op X model, I think that's a huge um, advantage. And also, when you think about traveling your staff, you know, now yeah. you have um, operators that can switch a game from home, yeah. um, and they don't have to travel as much. And you know, going back to the sustainability, I mean, the, what that's doing for our environment. For that that game, we reduced 2.05 metric tons of carbon, yeah. um, which was significant. Yeah. So I think. Well, you guys did. A, you guys are doing a great job. I'm going to investigate and do a deeper dive on what's up, what's coming up. Certainly, reinvents coming up, um, and, and congratulations for the first ever live cloud produced Appreciate hockey it. game. Thank you. And that's 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 a notable. That's historic. I mean, I don't think that's been done before. Has it been done? Is that first? Let's say first. It's first, it's it's first. It's at least in, in North America. It's for the for the made for the, the if you for look the at NHL. the yeah for the NHL and um, the, the professional sports. And I love the uh, NHL's got this test market in Canada. I don't know why they do it in Canada. It's a biased market. They already love hockey. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that was the test with the whole rep, whip, whip around games, like the red zone for NFL, for yeah, NHL. Yeah, so they're doing a coast-to-coast yeah. -coast show on Thursdays and then uh, Monday night hockey on Mondays. I mean, Friday. I want that every night. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> never know. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like to watch goals? Yeah. And or right. big hits and or good moves. So, Andrew, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks okay, for what do you think of our new studio? Pretty, pretty hot? Awesome. Pretty good? All right, Looks this great. is theCUBE studio. I've got Amazon Web Services, you know, live cloud production. You're seeing NHL live streaming games in the cloud. Truck rolls might be the thing of the past. 8K cameras are coming. All kinds of way to merchandise content. Uh, a new way, you're starting to see new channels, unlimited channels, and by the way, the role of the fan will, as a producer might come into the fold too. Again, so much going on in the content business. If you're in the media entertainment or a creator, I mean, it's the world's your oyster right now. It's going to be a great time. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE and theCUBE here in our East Coast studios in the NYSC. Thanks for watching.